Hey you guys, this is Mr. Sal here. We're going to go ahead and graph this function with a base value that is Euler's constant. Now the last example that we did, it also had Euler's constant as the base, or e, but it wasn't to the power of 2x, it was just x. Since this one is 2x, all that means is that this function is going to increase far more rapidly than the other one. We'll be able to see that in the table, which I'll go ahead and make right now. So there's my table. I'll choose values of x, since f of x depends on it. x, of course. I'm just going to go ahead and choose the value. Negative 1, 0, and 1. And based on what those values are, we'll go ahead and determine what our fourth value will be. So in this part of the problem, we're going to go ahead and just figure out what each of these are. By replacing the x value in this function with what we are trying to find, we can see that we've just replaced the x value with negative 1 because we chose that value of x and that's the only reason why we have negative 1 there for x just because we chose it. Now we're using a smaller value here because it should help us to see what's happening in the graph that we have and which you'll see here in a moment. But ultimately I'm just using a calculator in order to find these values. So if we were to multiply those two, we would get e to the power of negative 2, which is actually 0 0.1. I'm, I'm rounding this again because the decimal would go on, go on forever and ever because e is an irrational number. So in my table, I can go ahead and put that value in, and I can start on the next value. So that gives us e to the power of 2 times 0 is 0, and anything to the power of zero, even irrational numbers, are one, which I can put into the table now as that ordered pair. Next, we have e to the power of two times one, which is e to the power of two. And again, in my calculator, I have e to the power of two, which is seven point, I'll just round this one to the tenth, 7.4. So we can see that these values where x is positive the f of x is increasing, and it's going to increase very rapidly. I'm not going to do this one, but uh, again, in the calculator, if you used x as 2, you'd get something like uh, 54.6. So it's increasing at a far more rapid pace than the previous example that we did, which was e to the power of x. But what this does now is that we have this table. It gives us an opportunity now to graph each of these ordered pairs. Now these are the only three ordered pairs that I can fit on this graph. And if we looked at where x is 2, 54.6 is far off of this graph. So when we graph between 1 and 2, the x values 1 and 2, we're just going to show that the line goes up very quickly or that it's very steep. And you can see that there. Uh, my line's not perfect. Hopefully, if you do this on a computer, it looks a little bit better. But uh, that would do right there. This indicates that the line's increasing very quickly. And uh, if we could fit 54.6, uh, it would be far off the graph up here. Uh, and the distance between this point and 54.6 is huge, uh, especially with a graph like this. Next, we just need to look at uh, the values here that we've graphed. Now, the, the y values will never reach zero, uh, but they're going to approach zero far quicker than the other line from the previous graph on the problem we just did. So uh, what this means, and it's hard to show this on a graph like this, however, uh, it may look something like this. So. Uh, and this, yes, some of you notice that maybe this line would even be even closer to zero when x is negative 2 right here. But when you're drawing this freehand, it's a little difficult to get that point in there. Uh, yes, it'd be 0 0.018, which is very, very close to zero. And as the x's get more and more negative, you'll, you'll probably even have to use scientific notations with the power of 10 that's negative just to figure out those values. So, uh, as this graph goes to the left, it gets closer and closer to zero. As it goes to the right, it's shooting up very quickly.